What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. This is my second channel where I talk about business and marketing and personal development, all that kind of stuff that's not a fit for my main channel. What I wanted to talk about today was the time that they did this profile about me in this issue of Alternative Press back in July of 2015. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how that came together. Like, how does that happen when you see a profile like this? How does that come together? I wanted to explain how it came together in my case. So for any of you guys who want to get press coverage for what you're doing, like if you want magazines or blogs to write about you, I think there's a lot that you can kind of reverse engineer from what I did uh, that you can apply to what you are doing. And then second, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit in general about what it was like working with them. And yes, I am going to share all the juicy details, like how much it cost and all that stuff. So at this time, uh, this is about five years ago almost, I was working for Creative Live. Some of you guys may be familiar with Creative Live. If you're not, they're an online education company for creative professionals, primarily focusing on photographers. But I started working there at the beginning of 2013. And the first thing that I did there was help them uh, start doing classes about music production. So at the time they were only doing photography and a little bit of business stuff. To make a long story short, the CEO was asking, should we start doing music classes? And I was like, well, I can help with that because I had some contacts in the music production world. So I ended up working with a bunch of people like Kurt Ballou and Steve Evitz, Dylan Drew Escape Plan, uh, Jamie King and Tommy from Between the Buried and Me, the guys in Periphery, Joey Sturgis, did a whole bunch of stuff with Ale. I uh, had like God Forbid and Nails and Demon Hunter and some other people on as guests. So it was pretty cool. I did that for a couple years and that is what they were profiling me for in this magazine. But how did that happen? You know, did somebody just show up at my door with a tape recorder and was like, hey, do you want to talk about yourself? Of course not, right? That's not how it happens. But here is what happened. So when I started like the music and audio department within Creative Live, one of the things I had to figure out was like, how am I going to get anybody to know that this exists or care about it, right? I mean, it's the same problem that everybody has in business. Like you start a new thing and unless you find a way to get people to care about it, <laughs> it just exists in the void and nobody gives a shit and it dies, right? So I wanted to make a splash. And to me, especially five or six years ago, I think it's probably still true, but especially back then, a great way of making people kind of take you seriously is to run advertisements in print magazines. And at the time, Alternative Press, it probably still is, but AP were like at the top of their game. I think they were the second biggest music magazine in the country. They were doing, I wanna say like 750,000 copies of every issue and they were in Target and you know, obviously Barnes and Noble, like they were at the top of their game. And so I thought, well, if we could run an ad or an alternative press every month, that would like immediately make people take us seriously and think we're one of the big boys, right? We were a big company by music standards. Creative Live at the time, I think had maybe about a hundred employees, which is, is big for music. The other thing that was kind of cool and different from a lot of the situations I've been in is that we actually had some money. Creative Live is a venture backed Silicon Valley startup. I think at the time we had raised about $30 million. And when I say we, I didn't raise that money. You know, I wasn't the one going around and pitching investors. So I, I can't take any credit for that. But the company had some resources is the point. And so to go to the bosses and ask to spend tens of thousands of dollars on print ads was possible. It was a big ask, but it was possible. So so that's what I did. I essentially told them the same thing that I just told you. Look, if we want to get this thing like off the ground fast, if we want to give it a jump start, we've got to make a splash. We've got to make it like a big deal. And I think the way to do that is to run print ads specifically because they're expensive. Because if you're big enough to be able to buy an ad in a magazine, then that means you're like a player, right? So that's what I did. Here's an example of one of the ads. We ran, yeah, I designed this by the way. I'm actually pretty happy with it, how it came out. This is right after I worked at Abercrombie. So my graphic design chops were like pretty sharp at that time, probably faded a little bit since then. But so step one is I got the bosses to agree to the idea of buying ads in magazines, right? Step two is I need to figure out how much that costs and then get the magazine to agree to it too. So how do you do that? How do you know who to contact in a magazine? Well, it's actually pretty simple. If you look in the magazine, Right after the table of contents, there is a section called the masthead, which looks like this. 
that lists all the staff members. And if you look under advertising, you see the director of sales and business development is a guy named Josh Bernstein. Shout out to Josh. He was an awesome partner, loved working with him. And the sales manager is a guy named Derek Staples. Also shout out to Derek, love that guy. He was amazing to work with. If you happen to be watching this by any chance, Derek and Josh, I loved working with you guys. I hope you're doing well. So how do you get in touch with them? Sometimes these people have an email address. If not, there's a phone number here, main office. And you might go, well, I'm scared to pick up the phone. Well, fucking get over it. That's what you do. You pick up the phone and you call people until you get what you want. So I don't remember exactly how I contacted them. I don't know if I called or emailed or whatever, but to make a long story short, eventually I got a proposal from them and I wanna say it was $30,000 for a year of uh, print ads. What does this have to do with that profile? Are you saying that this was pay to play? Are you saying that because you bought ads that they did a profile on you? No, but yes but no, that does happen sometimes. Like sometimes a label or a band will say, yes, we will buy an ad or buy 10 ads, but only if it comes with a cover story or something like that. Or the other way around, like the magazine will say, we will do a cover story about your band, but we're gonna need you to commit to buying an ad on the back cover as well. That does happen. I don't do any of that stuff. I only wanna work with magazines and, and media outlets in general that promote stuff that they actually believe in. So if somebody proposed that to me, that would be a big turn off. That's not what happened here. However, when you buy ads from somebody, you have a relationship with them, right? So they didn't know who we were before. Now they do. And they actually genuinely thought that what we were doing was cool because we were working with people like, for example, Joey Sturgis and Chris Crummett. You know, Joey produced Asking Alexandria, Attack Attack of Mice and Men, The Devil Wars Prada, like tons of the big alternative press bands. Chris Crummett produced like Issues, Dance Gavin Dance, Sleeping with Sirens, Amorosa, Pierce the Veil, like tons of other alternative press bands. So we were working with the people that were in their sphere. I am a genuine fan of alternative press and I have been since the 90s. So there was an actual story to be told there. And so what happened was after we had been working together for a while, somebody sent me an email and said, hey, do you wanna do a Know Your Lifer profile like in the December issue or the, I guess, July issue? And I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. So he called me up and we did a little interview. And then a couple months later, they published this. So that's that's how it happened. Uh, so what are the takeaways? If you want to get coverage in uh, the media, whether that is a website or a magazine or a blog or whatever, it doesn't hurt to buy some ads. And think about it, like you're asking something from them, right? Like you want coverage and this is their job or their part-time job or whatever. You're asking them like, hey, will you support me? So it makes sense that, you know, you should support them too, right? Again, it might sound a little bit shady or weird, but I don't really think of it that way. I just think of it as like, if I genuinely believe in your magazine, I want to advertise in it. And if you genuinely believe in what I'm doing, then you want to cover it. And hopefully those two things like work out. Now I've tried this with other magazines and websites where I felt like it didn't work out, where they just kind of took our money and then I never heard from them again. And it didn't feel like there was a relationship there. It felt like I was just buying ads. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not like saying they did anything wrong. But for me, if I'm going to be investing like $30,000 like this, like I want it to be more of a true partnership and a relationship. And that's what it felt like with Alternative Press. I felt like they genuinely cared about what we were doing. And I hope that they felt like I genuinely cared about what they were doing because I did. And I still do. I still think Alternative Press is awesome. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone or send an email. And usually it's not as hard to contact people as you might think. Again, all I did was just look in the beginning of the magazine. There's names and phone numbers. You just call the phone number and go, hey, how's it going? My name is Finn from Creative Live. Could I talk to Josh Bernstein? And they'll go, sure. Uh, can I tell him what it's in reference? to and you say, I'm interested in advertising the magazine. And they'll go, yeah, okay, great. Because that's like literally his job, right? Don't be afraid to reach out to people is takeaway number one. Takeaway number two is if you really believe in building a relationship with somebody, like put your money where your mouth is, like buy some ads. Sometimes that's what makes the difference. So there you go. I hope that was interesting. That's how I ended up getting profiled in alternative press and I will see you next time.